I would like to explain to you what it means to fall from grace. So many times we've had fear when it comes to the verse in the Bible that says you have fallen from grace. And we thought that it could mean that we have fallen from the grace of God in the sense that God had enough of us. That God just felt that He cannot um, go any further with us and that we've exhausted the goodness of God and that we are out from under the protection of God and that God has basically to a certain degree turned his back on us. Now when we uh, look at the verse in Galatians it does not point to that and I would like to read to you what the Bible says there. It says uh, from Galatians 5 verse 1 it says stand fast therefore in the liberty we with Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect to you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace, for we through the Spirit wait for the, for the hope of righteousness by faith, which is the adoption. Let me read verse 5 again. It says, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ neither, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith that works by love. So what this talks about, it talks about the hope of righteousness and how we will attain unto this hope of righteousness. Now what is the hope of righteousness? The hope whereby we wait or the hope that we wait for by the Spirit is defined in chapter 4. It says here, but when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth His Son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and because we are sons God, God sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts crying Abba Father. So what he's saying here is that God took us out from under the law and put us under grace so that we would be able to receive the adoption of sons now if you go to Romans 8 verse 23, and let us do that um, and, and not rush through this. Romans 8 verse 23, you will find what the adoption is. It says here, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit. This talks about Christians that's already seeing the fruit of the Spirit in their life. It says, Even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. So what he's talking about here, when he talks about the adoption and when Galatians says that God took us out from under the law and put us in a more powerful system that has got the ability to actually bring forth the manifestation of sonship, which is uh, to become immortal in your human flesh. That is what it talks about. Uh, you can go and study this out in the scripture. You will see that's exactly what it is. We can even refer this back to Romans chapter 1 and uh, from verse 4 to 6. You can clearly see there that Jesus Christ was declared to be the son with power. In other words, an adopted son. Um, he was declared to be a manifested son. In other words, Jesus Christ was manifested as the Son of God. How? By the Spirit that actually raised him from the dead. That's what it's all about. He was manifested as a son by the Spirit that raised him from the dead. Now it says that because we are sons, we receive this Spirit that will bring forth the very same thing in our lives. Now in order for us to be manifested sons or to, um, to have the resurrection from the dead and to see full life and immortality come to our bodies, 
The only way we can do that or have access to that is if God comes and does it for us in us. So there are basically two ways wherein we can try and attain unto life or there are two paths that we would think lead unto life. One is the law and the other one is the Spirit of God wherein the Spirit raises you up into that. Now when you are under the law because of the weakness of your flesh and your inability to do the law, you are saying that, or you will never then partake of what God has dreamt for you because of this law and the weakness of your flesh and your inability to do it. Now, you can either try and receive eternal life by the works of the law, or you can try and receive it by faith. Uh, in Jesus Christ, relying upon the Spirit to bring forth the hope of righteousness uh, in us. And this is what it says here. Let me just point to that again. It says, for through the Spirit, we wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So we are not trying, and, and he was trying to correct some of the Galatians here, which went into the circumcision message where the Jews said that the only way when you can have access into the life of God is if you are circumcised, obey the laws. That is the way wherein you can go into eternal life and that will give you this eternal life. And Paul says, listen man, by the law this can never happen. And if you go and you become legalistic and law-minded, then you are not under the power of the Spirit that manifests the life that's only by a gift in your life and you're actually bringing forth fruit um, by willpower and not God and that is defined as fallen from grace. The grace of God is a life that manifests in you on account of God bringing it forth in you and the only way you can ever fall from grace or not be in the place where what's in your life is a free gift is when you reject the message that it can be for free by the doing of God, by simply relying upon Him, and where you try through Judaism or the works of the law um, to attain unto eternal life. So falling from grace doesn't mean I've made a mistake, I've, um, you know, I used language that I was not supposed to use, I was angry with my wife or my children or my friends, or I broke the speed limit, or I do, did any of those kind of things and therefore God uh, de decided to take his hand off protection of me. That's not what it is. Uh, you can never fall from a place where God will not uh, look at you with mercy and compassion in his heart. That is impossible. God gave his son while we were yet sinners and we need to understand that. It's nothing we can do to earn the goodness of God. But what can happen is if God comes and He presents to you His love and His care and He says, let me bring forth holiness in your life by my works and not your works. And you say, no, thank you, Lord. I'm not interested. Then God will not withdraw Himself from you, but it is us who go and say, we are not making use of God's hand extended wherein He brings forth life and immortality for free in our lives by simply relying upon Him. And that is what falling from grace is all about. I hope this encourages you to know that God will always love you, always be there for you, and that He will never change His ways. If um, the whole church decides that they're going to live by the law, you know, God cannot deny himself. He's not going to try and implement that system now and say, well, because the majority of people walk that way, therefore I'm also going to walk that way. No, he is going to stick to his way of doing. And that means if you follow any other way of doing, you will have the fruit of that doing. And in this case, it was talking about circumcision, people going back to the law, and as you have your mind washed with the things of the, of the law, the, the law way of thinking, then you will not find the effect of Christ in your life, but you'll have the effect of the law system in your life, 
which is in the very same chapter uh, defined as the fruit of the flesh. So thank you so much for watching this. If you've got any questions, please send it to info at dynamicministries.com. Also make sure uh, if you're interested in this message of grace and you want to learn more about it, to visit our website, which is dynamicministries.com. Uh, all the messages there are for free. I've also got two books there that can really bless you. It's called Born from Innocence is the one, and the other one is Jesus is the Tithe. Thank you so much for watching and sharing this with your friends. God bless.